Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler from Melda Production. Recently, somebody asked me if I could do ducking in M Convolution MB. They watched my video on M Turbo Reverb and I showed how to do ducking in there using the compressor, but they wondered if it's possible to do it in M Convolution MB. And it actually is. And I'm gonna show you how to do it in this video. Although you, had, you do have to use a different method, but uh, let's get into it. So I just have a guitar sound here. It sounds like this. So let's take that and let's put some reverb on it. So I have M Convolution MB here. What we're going to do is just drag this over into this track and this will just route the audio there. And this will depend on your DAW, but here in Reaper we can just do this. Make sure it's going to 1 and 2 here. What you don't want to do is don't drag it onto the plugin, at least not yet. So now we should have it coming in there. We're going to choose a reverb here. Let's choose Clear Hall, I guess. And let's listen to it. Now, you can't really hear it, it's a little bit low. If you notice you have this problem, one thing I would check the advanced settings here, and it's set to normalize here. So you see like, oh, this is really low in volume. I'm just going to disable this. Boom, there we go. So if you have that problem, you can check that out there. So let's hear it now. That's pretty good, but let's see if we can find a longer one. This is about six seconds. That's good, but it's kind of getting in the way. So what I want to do is I just want to duck that out of the way as we're playing. Actually, make sure we turn it up 100%. This now will be even worse like this. Yeah, that's really in the way. Now, what we can do here is we can just turn down the output. We could also do the wet dry, but let's do the output first. What we're going to do, since we don't have a compressor, we're going to use one of the mods. We'll just go here, we're going to click clear and learn, and just attach it to the output. Once we have that, just click it again to stop it, and we can click this to just turn it on. But you'll notice, hey, why is it going back and forth? If we look inside, it's because it's set up with an LFO. Now, for some reason, if you wanted to do this this way, we could, but we don't need to. Also, one thing you might want to mention, or I should mention here, is the value. I could invert this, but I like to change the value to zero and use the max as negative something. So let's try like negative eight. So this is the maximum amount it will be reduced. But we still don't want it on the LFO. What we want is the follower here. Now this will work in a similar way to a compressor. This is just the follower, which you also have in a compressor, and it's going to tell the output to turn down once it meets certain conditions, such as when it goes past this level minimum. Also, we want to adjust the attack. Uh, you can set this at 10 milliseconds. I like it a little bit faster. 100 milliseconds for the release is about right. You, depending on what you want to do, you might want it longer or shorter. The hold you might want to increase if you notice, ah, you know, it's uh, reducing too fast. That's a good one. But also, especially important here is the RMS length. So this will make things a little bit smoother, but I find it makes uh, it a little bit hard to detect things at 10 milliseconds. You're gonna need a long slice of audio for that. So since things change quickly, I'm gonna move this down to just one millisecond. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to play the audio. I'm going to look here and I'm gonna adjust the level max until it's just hitting the tip of the weighted form. And I might move the level minimum up to like this. <laughs> So you can hear that working already. Uh, we can adjust it more if I think, you know what, needs more reduction. So instead of negative eight decibel reduction, let's try like negative 12. There we go. And I could just keep adjusting it, but let's look here at the output as I play it now. There we go. It's fading in rather suddenly. If you don't want that, I think, oh, you know what, that's a little bit too much reduction. Let's put it at negative 10. I don't want it to come in quite that quickly, so let's move this to like 500 something. 
Let's play it one more time. Etc. Now I could put the release longer if I didn't want that to come in quite so quickly. And so adjust that to your own personal taste and what sounds good to you. There's a lot of things we could do here too. I could turn the level minimum down as well so it doesn't come in quite so quickly. And also if you're doing something like a, a bass drum or some other thing, you can use a bandpass filter in here. But let's say you want to do something else. Like I want this to be ducked not by the guitar signal coming in, but by another signal. So this isn't going to sound so good, but uh, maybe is a good real world example. So I have these kick drums here. So let's say I want the guitar reverb ducked by this. What I'm going to do is go into here and I'm going to drag this directly on the plugin, not inside the uh, reverb bus. Here we go. Now you see the difference is the audio goes from one and two into three and four, as opposed to this one where it goes one and two into one and two. So we want it going into three and four. Now, if we listen to it, look at the side here as the bass drum's playing. So you can see the bass drum is coming in the side chain. That's perfect. What we're going to do here is do the exact same thing, except here in the detector where it says side chain, just turn this on. And then we can adjust the level maximum, the level minimum the same way, like this. Now, I don't really want to hear that bass drum for some reason if I wanted to do this. It's not really in rhythm, but uh, I can go into here, whatever you're doing, and I will just make sure this is pre-fader, like this, before my fader, and then just turn my fader down. So now, as it's playing, you don't have to hear the bass drum, but you can see it moving the output. So now it's controlled by that bass drum, but you don't have to hear it, and it's reducing the output. And of course, you can increase it and do more. I can increase the release rate. I can put hold on there if I wanted to uh, hold it for a little bit longer, like this. I'll show you what the hold does. Let's put it like 120. So now it's not going to return so quickly, like this. So by adjusting all these parameters, there's a lot of things you can do here. And it even has advanced parameters here. If I want to change the attack shape or release shape, there's all sorts of things. I believe in my uh, Melda compressor videos, advanced compressor settings, I go over these. The follower for this and that are mostly the same. So hopefully you can get a lot out of this. If you have any other questions about it, leave them below. If you like this, give me a thumbs up and check out all the other plugins at MeldaProduction.com. Till next time. See you.